As a complimentary cocktail is usually a cause for celebration, but in this next topic, it's the basis of something that happened that isn't good and also caused a controversy. A man who spent four years in prison for beating his girlfriend at a casino is suing that same casino for a controversial reason for allegedly serving him too many free drinks. The 31-year-old, who is still on probation for the assault, says that he is not the only one to blame for the violation. The casino stands firm and says that he alone is to blame for the domestic violence that almost took the victim's life. But is he? In this lawsuit, could the casino be partly to blame? And it's interesting, so in this case, he's bringing up the Dram Shop Act. That's a law that holds businesses liable for selling alcohol to visibly intoxicated people. I guess on that night, saying that he had been served at least 15 drinks. Whoa. Says he suffers from PTSD. The problem that I have with this is not that alcohol cannot facilitate, because 92% of domestic abuse cases involve alcohol, according to some statistics. But to use alcohol as an excuse is abhorrent. And so I, I, I hate it when people try to project. I mean, this is a man who was put in jail for beating up his girlfriend, and now he's saying it's not my fault. It's the alcohol's fault or it's the casino's fault. And I, I don't, it's I have a problem a mixed, with that. Mixed bag. You know, legally, if you're so intoxicated that you, you've lost control, then there's the whole issue of intent. Did... Yeah, but I agree. But at the end of the day, I feel as though your bartender is not your babysitter. And I feel like, although I definitely support that law and you should not serve an, no. a visibly intoxicated person more drinks, right. but your bartender did not pick you up. They did not make you drink the drink. And especially in these cases, they did not make you hit your significant well, other. That... So in the United States, every nine seconds, a woman is assaulted. And at the end of the day, these people have to take responsibility for that, and you can't blame it on them. Well, and I, I didn't realize that that association of alcohol and domestic violence is that high, so... Well, uh, yeah, 92% yeah. of domestic abuse assailants reported having alcohol on the day of assault. That's a massive percentage. You know, I think there, though, if you look at an act like this, I think that it makes sense in a few scenarios. Let's say you overserve someone and they can barely walk and they've got their keys on the table and then they go drive and something abhorrent happens. You know, I don't want to say that that's an accident because it's not. When you drive and you drink, you, nothing that happens at that point forward is an accident. Or let's say you go down the stairs and you fall and break your leg and it's after someone overserved you. That's very different than this scenario where someone literally went home and abused someone else. The personal responsibility, I feel like in our society, we have really gotten away from personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's a cop out here. Yeah. A, a, a lame excuse. Yeah. Well, the, the good news if you're on our side is that the judge apparently has decided to throw out this lawsuit was quoted in saying state law won't allow a felon to recover losses as a result of his crimes. Because you really would hate a scenario where people could say, well, oh, you know, I did this, but it was the alcohol. Exactly. And, and had that be the get out of jail free card.